These bandits, if you don't know, they are cooperating with a lot of bad elements in our security system. This is a business. So many people are involved, you'll be so surprised. Nigerian security forces colludes with the bandits, says Sheikh Gumi on Morning Show with Arise News. Hi guys, you're watching M Chiki series. If you're a joining subscriber, thank you for your support. I quite appreciate that. It's good to have you around again. And if you're new to this channel, thank you for clicking on this video. Make yourself comfortable as we get right into this video. Also, hit that red subscribe button and turn your notification bell on. That way, you get our latest updates. It has been really a very revealing interview with Sheikh Gumi on Arise News Morning Show. It was broadcasted yesterday, so they asked him a lot of questions. If you guys know very well, Gumi is always negotiating with the bandits. There are a couple of videos out there that confirm this. He has been negotiating for kidnapped children to be released. Most often, they pay heavy ransom. So he's still defending this group of people talking about the government granting them amnesty the highlight of the interview for me was when he made it clear that there are some elements in nigerian security forces who are aiding and abating these bandits and some boko haram members and that's the reason why banditry and boko haram are not going anywhere the most interesting part of it is that early this morning nigerian military replied gumi saying that army does not collude with bandits have it in mind that this is not the first time this kind of news is coming up. There has been series of reports about how Nigerian military collude with Boko Haram allegedly and that's the reason why Boko Haram has not been crushed in Nigeria. Tell me, why wouldn't there be bad elements in the army when they are recruiting repentant Boko Haram? People that have already committed atrocities that are supposed to be prosecuted, they recruit them back into Nigerian army. Then, why wouldn't there be saboteurs? Just give me one reason. I know most people suffer from amnesia. They don't seem to remember what has happened. Sometime in 2019, there was this alleged collusion of soldiers with terrorists. That one made the headlines sometime on August 20, 2019. And there was also news on Reuters on January 20th, 2015, whereby a Brigadier General and 21 other Army officers were ordered to face a court martial over alleged sabotage in the war against Islamist militant group Boko Haram. So at the end of the day, I don't even know how the case went. Have in mind that Gumi has been in the military, he was a captain in the military. I don't see the reason why Nigerian military is so quick to respond to him. They have a series of reports on that. So I don't see the reason why they are feeling so bad, they are feeling pain that he talked about it the problem is that there is so much corruption in nigeria and people don't want to talk about certain things rather they want to pretend that it doesn't exist people live a lot in denial in nigeria most especially when that thing is real and they know that it has a lot of consequences it affects a lot of big people instead of them to accept it the way it is they tend to deny it but that you deny it doesn't mean that it does not exist the earlier we start telling ourselves the truth in nigeria the better for all of us i can't understand the reason why a nation cannot put all the problems on the table and find a solution look at gumi now he's advocating for amnesty for fulani headsmen the bandits because he said that not all fulani headsmen are bandits yes i accept that then he started citing examples of niger delta militants IPOB, but he forgot that Eastern Security Network, the militant part of IPOB, was created because Fulani Hestmen were terrorizing people in the Southeast. That was how it came about. Now he turned it that IPOB are burning police stations, they are burning all the government structures, and that's the reason why Fulani Hestmen is different from them because they only kidnap for money. Seriously? That he can even sit on national television and be talking about this? I know if I'd been another person, they would have told the person, whatever you're saying, you're entitled to your own opinion opinion because that's the way they normally say but they allow this man to say everything that says a lot of things about the hypocrisy in nigerian media there are several points that gumi dropped here that when you think about deeply when you reflect on it you realize that these people have commercialized banditry kidnapping and that's the reason why they negotiate for ransom like 800 million for bandits so at the end of the day they want to play the model of niger delta when asari dokubo was there they were agitators enjoy use they were agitating for the ill treatment being meted to their community when they paid him off he did not even invest the money in nigeria he took the money to Benin republic and created a university that he called amashri university or something like that 
so this is the model i think these guys are trying to play here whereby they have commercialized banditry and kidnapping they're using it to collect money from the government that's the reason why i keep saying that nigeria is going to nowhere can you imagine people negotiating with bandits people that are supposed to be prosecuted so we've gotten to this extent whereby sheikh gumi will come openly on national television in saying that people who kidnap school children to make money that they've not done anything that what they're doing is lesser than what people who are burning government structures are doing you heard him he also made it clear that this is a war situation it's just like some nigerians don't really understand it fulani is all over some of these fulani people People are all over killing people so he's saying that when government negotiate with the bandits then Fulani Hestmen will stop killing people he may declare that it's war so if you don't protect your land they will engulf the land and finish the people who are living there and they started all these killings before Oduruwa people formed their own and IPOP people formed Eastern Security Network but the question is has Buhari spoken to them in the language that they understand no and he's not doing anything about that he's only concentrating in southeast and him saying that IPOP that burning structures he should not say it like that because I saw another video that was talking about people burning police structures killing people in southeast to also be members of the police I saw that video when they do all those things they target uh, 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 IPOB or all those things so why would police be killing people and they will they will start uh, 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 accusing innocent citizens innocent youth uh, because me I don't understand so you guys just had her a lot of killings are going on in the southeast and most often people blame all those on ipop i also had gumi mention high school dropout rate in the north which is reason for children picking up arms but the thing is that most northerners like to enroll their children in alamajiri school because of religious reason and when they decide to do otherwise they leave school it's supposed to be the responsibility of the parents to find a trade where they will enroll their children in just like in south there are some children that drop out of school did they take to ban the train no so i'll let you guys listen to me leave your thoughts in the comment section for me I'm gonna sign off here, stay healthy and safe. Remember to share this video with family and friends if you love it. And subscribe to this channel if you've not done already. And I'm gonna catch you guys in my next video. Bye and remain blessed. Steve. Uh, the Niger Delta example, I think uh, we can take example from that. <coughs> when, when they were vandalizing the pipelines, which is an unblock accord for the Nigerian economy, uh, the nation came into negotiation with them and they are even giving the pipelines to God and for a period of a uh, relative period of peace we had Nigeria was having its oil supply continuous the herdsmen too now are controlling a big shot of, of, of land whereby now they are preventing farmers from farming and it's very important for the economy of the nation because when you leave a big uh, chunk of the population hungry without farming is going to uh, have a consequence which we don't want to experience. So in the same sense, as the Niger Deltans are important to the economy, the, this hard man now has suddenly become very important to the Nigerian economy because they can prevent, in fact, they are preventing people from farming. They are ready even to, to sit down. They told me we are ready to sit down with the government. So I don't know what is stopping this national congress of uh, hard men because if they can come together and decide that, okay, no more kidnapping, the war is finished, and this is our conditions, I don't see any other flying man breaking that agreement and uh, continue the crime. I have been saying it's an ethnic war, and I think people didn't understand me. It's because you find the Fulani fighting the Yorubas in the southwest, fighting the Igbos in the southeast, fighting the other tribes in the north, depending on which region it is. So it's a tribal war going on. So I think the government, the media, and other tribes are taking side in this war. And unfortunately, the Fulani Hatsman has nobody to tell his own side of the war, the same, the same side of the story. And this, I think, uh, is what is prolonging the issue. Otherwise, we can finish it in a short time. IPOB, IPOB is attacking the police, is attacking the army, is attacking INEC, government institutions, killing our men in service. And the herdsmen are kidnapping children not to kill them.
to get money. So how can you compare somebody who's killing our gallant men in the armed forces directly attacking them to somebody who's kidnapping children to make money, not to kill them? Look, we, have to, we need some fairness in what we are doing. Students and when we say hatsmen, look, hatsmen, let's, 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 let's finish. You were captain in the Nigerian army before you left. You served in the military. You suffered yes. for this country. Yes. You wore the khaki of the army. You swore allegiance to this country. But now you are speaking yes. for a group that is threatening the sovereignty of this country. Sheikh, where does your loyalty lie? To Nigeria, the country you swore allegiance to as a captain in the military? Or to people that want to destroy the sovereignty and the unity of this country? Where do you lie, Sheikh? Yes, my allegiance, I, my allegiance is to the Nigeria. Nigerian people to the Nigerian, my, my, my allegiance to the Nigerian government, but I will not accept criminality, whether it's from the military, whether it's from the government, whether it's from the individual Nigerians or tribe or group. The latest picture of the kidnapped stu students, when you look at the kidnappers too, there are children like them. The, the difference is that the government has allowed those other children uneducated, and they are left to fend for themselves, to buy weapons to protect themselves, to buy weapons to terrorize the nation. Why is their own school? Why are they not in school? Look at them. They are all children of the same age.